save 10% with my code Bobby10. Just kidding, guys. Today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, upon popular request, we're going to react to Hamza Tsortsis with his video Why the Quran Destroys Atheism in Under 10 Minutes. This video title obviously resonates with me. Atheism is a rational ideology based upon nothing. Exactly, based upon nothing. This is the claim of the atheist. Something came out of nothing. How more irrational can it get? Guys, with no further ado, let's have a look. For our youngsters who are actually watching, what would you like to give as an advice or kind of like a, a proof for God, I would say? Because there are many, many types of arguments that can be made. The challenge, however, is that we sometimes look for the easiest, simplest one that can you know one size fits all kind of thing if you were to pick one of them and you were to say if you know this and if you've mastered this and if you understood it then inshallah you'll be able to give a good message to people who might be uh, away from it maybe kind of wake them up to the reality of who Allah is and so kind of shake them up so that they understand that you know they have to die one day and face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what, what would you say is uh, a good argument for that Atheism for me is the equivalent, if not worse, than believing the earth is flat. It doesn't really have intellectual veracity no, at all. We've given it that I'm platform because it's maybe we either. haven't really understood the psychological aspects of atheism or even the so-called intellectual aspects. But when we look at the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the main question that Allah is really answering for us is not does God exist, but mm. who's worthy of worship? or that Allah is worthy of worship. And this is very important to understand because it shifts the debate and the discussion. Mm. And we could unpack why that's the case because mm. I would argue that the idea of creative agency, the rububi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is self-evidently true. Mm. And even in philosophy, if something is self-evidently true, true by default, the one who's opposing that claim has to provide the evidence, right? Mm. Mm. And there's so many other things we can unpack and there's a chapter in my book on this issue. So. I, I frame it that way so that people realize, oh, that's very interesting. And when you look at what an atheist is from an Islamic paradigm, hmm. you have different terms. For example, you have Ilhad. Hmm. You have the Dahriya, which is like the philosophical naturalist of like the early period. But say Ilhad coming from Lahad, right? Hmm. Lahad in the, in the grave is like, you know, you, you dig a hole and there is a little side pocket. That's the Lahad. Yeah? Hmm. It's a deviation, godlessness. Hmm. So a Mulhid is someone who deviates. 
That's the first point. The second point, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in a hadith in Sahih Muslim that every child is born in a state of fitrah. Yeah, there are scholarly discussions on this, but basically, we have a fitrah that has an affinity, or it's driving itself towards the haq, which is mm-hmm. Allah is one. He's worthy of worship. He's worthy of extensive praise. He exists. So it's natural. Then Allah okay. says, only a fool, someone imprudent, mm. will reject the way of Ibrahim, yeah. which is Tawheed, and within Tawheed is creative agency, the Rububi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what are we getting from the Quranic paradigm here? We're getting that atheism is unnatural, it's a deviation, right? It's irrational. Mm. Because what does Allah say in chapter 52, verse 35 to 36? At the end, indeed you have no certainty, right? Because what does Allah say? Did you come from nothing? Am khuliqu, makhluk, you're something yeah. that once didn't exist. Yeah. Muhdath, you came into being. Mm. So did you come from nothing? I know there is a scholarly discussion if it's from or via nothing. And this is why the Quran is so powerful and transcendent of time, of course. Because if you look into this claim, it addresses our time right now where the atheists claim we came out of nothing. Don't you see it is found within the Quran? And it asks you yourself to reflect upon this statement. Ask yourself, did you come out of nothing? How would that make sense if there is nothing, literally nothing, why would atoms form in the first place? Why would there be a big bang out of nothing? If there is no building material, no potential for anything, there is nothing, how can anything spring out of it? And moreover, the question why is of course not answered either then. Hmm, It just stemmed into existence and we can see certain evolution, a certain intelligent pattern. Evolution is intelligence after all is it not where does this intelligence come from where does existence come from what is existence are you existing all those questions are not being answered within atheism quite the opposite they are being ignored under the pretense that we cannot answer them anyways yeah it's ridiculous at the end the conclusion is the same yeah did you come from nothing did you create yourself did you create the heavens and the earth Mm. Indeed, you don't have any certainty. Mm. Exactly. And I gave them just basically an explanation of these ayat. Wallahi, I've, been, I've used these ayat against philosophers, thinkers, humanists, liberals, secular secularists, some of the greatest sure. atheists, and I am telling you, greatest they have atheists. had no response as a counter defeater. Mm. They may have some shubuhat here and there, but as a as a undercutting defeater, nothing. Mm. Yeah, and it's from the Quran. So the Quran is talking about the human being, but mm. it can, you can't apply the logic of these verses to something that came into existence. Mm. So we could establish the universe came into existence just by a metaphysical argument. You don't need yeah. to go to astrophysical, astrophysical evidence that's dhanni, because yeah. it's speculative, it's going to change and it may change. We don't have to go to the philosophy of, of, of mathematics or the infinity. We could just talk about very basic things. So mm. if you allow me, take yeah. this phone for example. If I said to you this phone is eternal, mm. everyone would reject it. But yeah. why is the phone not eternal? Mm. Maybe I can claim this is, I, you didn't see its beginning. You, don't, you, do, you can't see its destruction. This phone is eternal. Mm. Well, the, the reason intuitively and rationally we believe this phone is not eternal is because why? It has limited physical qualities. Mm. It has a particular shape, yes. size, volume, color, temperature. All shapes and forms that we witness in this world, in this dunya, are temporal. All of them will decay. The only eternal is al haq is God. Density, mass. Why is it this color, not another color? Why is it this shape, and not another shape? Why is it this mass, and not another mass? And so on and so forth. And that raises another question. Can things with limited physical qualities give rise to their own limitations? No. Mm. I didn't give rise to my own own limitations. Therefore, there is something external to me that gave rise to those limitations. Mm. And therefore, this thing is finite. Mm. So therefore, it had a beginning. So you and if you take this phone. Yes, it's a great example. If you're creating a motorcycle, for example, you can create a thousand cc motorbike that will go up 300 kilometers an hour. Or you can create a scooter. You're creating those limitations with a purpose. There's a purpose for a scooter and there's a purpose for a race bike. And expand it to the size of the universe same conclusion because hmm. it fundamentally is made of the same stuff yeah. whether you call it strings or quarks or whatever irrelevant limited physical qualities sure so it's finite if it's finite then you could universalize the logic of these of these of these ayat hmm. did the thing that is makhluk that came into existence that's finite did it come from nothing hmm. 
Did it create itself? Was it created by something else created? Because why? What does the ayah say? Did you, the human being, the thing that is makhluk, create the heavens and the earth, which is makhluk? Yeah? yeah. So ultimately, is that an explanation? Mm-hmm. Or, which is implied in the ayat, or is there an uncreated creator? So just to mm-hmm. repeat. Exactly. Did it come from nothing? Did it create itself? Did, was it created by something else that was created? Or was it created by something uncreated? Mm-hmm. So let's break it down. Could the universe come from nothing? What we mean by nothing is no thing, no prior cause or conditions. Mm. We're not talking about the theological nothing, kun mm. fayakun. Mm. Yeah. That's different. That means Allah didn't have anything prior when He actually created the first creative thing, the mm. first creation. He only had Allah himself. was there, yani, so you can't say it's nothing at all. His yeah, exactly. irada and kudra were the prior cause or conditions to bring the first creation into existence. Yes. So mm. We're not talking about that type of nothing. We're he would be the infinite potential, so He's most certainly not nothing. Saying no thing, no prior cause or conditions, no thing at all. Can something arise from that no no because when you have kuchne nothing mm, and more kuchne yeah. and more kuchne you're gonna get kuchne kuchne yeah zero plus zero plus zero is zero mm, something yeah. with no property with no potential no no prior cause of conditions no thing at all it's impossible yeah. and if they claim that's the case then they're irrational and absurd it because is. it's the equivalent of me shutting my eyes counting to three and after three this whole room has disappeared mm. and i should say it's perfectly fine mm. how can that be perfectly fine uh, because it's irrational. There must have been an explanation how it disappeared or it's gone into nothing. Because hmm. if you could, yeah, to play devil's advocate here, the atheist will say they simply do not know, and neither do we, and therefore they are not obsessing about what has been before. They are simply observing the natural world, and they do not obsess, as I said, about what has happened prior to the assumed Big Bang. This is the atheist claim. Even though the position is irrational, their claim to fame is that we simply do do not need to know. Except the universe coming from nothing, yeah. you should also accept this building, this room, to disappear for no reason at all. True. And that's logically upset. So it couldn't come from nothing. Couldn't create itself. Very easy way of doing this. Did you create yourself? Can your mother give birth to herself? Mm. This implies that something exists and doesn't exist at the same time. Mm. Last point. Was the universe created by something else that was created ultimately? Mm. Many may argue, well, this universe was as a result of a prior universe. Mm. Okay, no problem. Is that an ultimate explanation? Mm. No. Okay. If it's not an ultimate explanation, let's explain that universe that created this universe. Oh, it was another universe. Mm. Okay, no problem. What created that universe? Infinite Another universe. Oh, okay, what created that universe? Mm. Another universe. Mm. If that goes on forever, we will never have today's universe, right? (coughs) Yeah. This is not the infinite regress of events, it's the infinite regress of causes. It's absurd, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, in order for this universe to come into existence, it had to wait forever yeah. in order for it to come into existence. Mm. But forever never ends. Yeah. And if it's true, it's a forever chain, we would never have this universe in the first place. Mm. So Ibn Taymiyyah and Al-Ghazali basically affirmed this point. So what does this mean? There must be an uncreated creator. Mm. That's the quick e- quick way of showing that there's a creator from the Quran. And I believe the Quran arguments are the best arguments. And I believe they could also be universalized. So you don't have to believe in revelation to accept this argument. Yeah, this is universal. Yeah, you can, you can universalize it. So from that perspective, you could show there's an uncreated creator and there's mm. other things that you can rationalize, but we could just just go to the next point really quickly. If Again, to play devil's advocate here, because I've been listening to many atheist claims, they would say now, but you cannot see that uncreated creator. And this is proof enough for them. But of course you cannot see an uncreated creator within a limited creation. However, those questions are not answered through science but through philosophy this is a philosophical endeavor and philosophically Hamza Saucy's points here make absolute sense and the atheist ones do not is the creator then he's worthy of worship Hmm. he is worthy of your adoration of your obedience and your worship there's many reasons for that Hmm. but let's take one very quick reason if Allah is al uh, al Khalik, he's the perpetually creating, he's Al Khalak, sorry, mm. the perpetually creating, he's Al Khal he's Al Khalik, the creator, then he created everything. Mm. All of yes. the asbab okay. that you use to enjoy yourself and all of the blessings that you have. But significantly, Allah has given you something, has created something for you to use, or he's given you something that is priceless that you don't earn, own, or deserve. Mm. And it's freely given to you. And it's every moment of your existence. If I said you had 10 minutes left to live, but in order to have another 10 days, you have to give me all of your wealth, you would throw all of your wealth at at me. Such is the priceless gift of life. But we don't earn life, own life or or deserve it. We can't even create a fly as Allah says in the Quran. Mm. So from that perspective, if it's true that Allah gives us a priceless gift at every moment of our existence, that we don't earn, own or deserve, how should it make us feel? Mm. Grateful. 
grateful to whom? Allah. And gratitude is Deep. a key to worship. It is a form of worship, right? As we know in Um Kitab, Surah Al Fatiha, the, f- the first depends what opinion you follow, but the, the main verse, you know, all perfect praise and gratitude belongs to the Lord of everything that exists. True. So, and, and, and how do you express your gratitude? Through worship, mm. acts of worship. How do you know what these acts of worship are? Following the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's. Very quick nutshell. It was a powerful question, Allah but Allah. I would use the no, Quranic argument. Really well, I would use the Quranic argument. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely deep, especially in the end. There, he is absolutely correct. The atheist argument cannot stand upon any firm ground. Quite the opposite, yet again, because it stands on nothing. If you think about atheists, they will tell you that something came out of nothing, and now somehow we have to obey a certain moral standard dictated to us by society. Why would we have to do that? David Wood, as much as everybody hates him, made one good point. He said that back in the day, he used to be an atheist. And during that time, he took a hammer and smashed his father's head in. Yes, he was a psychopath, a diagnosed one. That's his claim. And he was asking the atheists, why don't they do the same? Because at least he truly was an atheist. He didn't believe in any type of consequence. Think about it. Something came out of nothing. And once you die, you go to nothingness. You stop existing. If you truly would stop existing completely, then nothing matters. Because what does it matter if I die today or tomorrow or in 100 years? Who cares? Because you couldn't remember anything. Matter of fact, if you go back to nothing, you would never remember that you were born in the first place. So all the moments that you shared with your friends, with your family, with your children are all null. They're all for nothing. Thing. They never actually happened. So evolution just stemmed, popped out of nothingness and somehow randomly human families evolved out of that. Human families that can ask questions, that can feel love, affection towards each other. But all of that doesn't matter, remember? Because tomorrow the lights go off and everything is dark, everything is black, nobody cares. So if this is truly the reality that the atheist mind wants to propose to us, why don't we just all go out, shoot everybody, pillage, just absolutely rampage, because nothing matters. There is no right and wrong. But moreover, the atheists will always insist that they are moral people. Why? Why do you care? I talk to so many vegans, man. Most vegans are atheists. So they don't believe in God. They don't believe in right and wrong. But they do believe that it's wrong to eat animals. Why would it be wrong if there is no right and wrong in the first place? And why would it be wrong if you believe in Darwinistic evolution? Just look around you. Everything eats each other. So join the party. Have a steak. Who cares? Tomorrow you are dead. Don't you understand? It is an ideology of absolute despair because it doesn't give you any moral groundwork, any philosophical groundwork, any value. But the human being seeks value. This is what we do in everything that we do. We are seeking value. We're trying to understand the worth behind it, the meaning behind it. The human being is a creature that wants to understand the meaning, the meaning of its surroundings and the meaning of its own existence. But you're going to take that away from humans. You're going to tell them that they're just biological machines, that are worth absolutely nothing. Shame on you. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.